Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome back to my podcast if you are listening to this episode in the audio version only. For those of you who are new here, I'm Rox, I'm a Western tropical astrologer and today we're going to be talking about the full moon in Aquarius happening on the 23rd, 24th of July depending on where you are based in the world. I also run a podcast by the exact same name written in the stars by Rux, the podcast, and you can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. If you prefer to listen to this during your commute, whilst you're working out, I don't know, completely, completely up to you. Before we start talking astrology, a few important things that I want to mention. The first one, I have actually mentioned it in passing. I'm a Western tropical astrologer, therefore all videos on my channel and all episodes on my podcast will follow Western tropical astrology. Secondly, I work with the whole sign house system. Why? Because I found it to be the most accurate in my experience and in my client's experience, uh, especially when it comes to timings. And uh, last but not least, if you want to work with me, if you want to book a consultation, if you want to book a personalized reading, you can find me on my website, which is written in the stars dash astrology dot com. So written in the stars dash astrology dot com. And in the services section, you can see the various types of readings that you can opt for. There is the one hour live uh, video call um, option on Zoom. And then you've got a variety of different other types of, uh, of readings, which are audio recorded only as if you were to get your very own podcast episode from me. Full moon in Aquarius, 23rd, 24th of July. Let's talk about what this looks like. And what we can expect from this full moon at a collective level and also at an individual level, um, because it is going to be one to remember. I feel like I say that a lot about a lot of events, but um, this full moon in particular um, is playing back to themes that emerged um, at the new moon in February, um, on the 11th of February. Uh, it also plays back to themes that emerged at the uh, great conjunction of Saturn and uh, Jupiter in uh, 2020, at the end of 2020 in, in December. <sighs> and tensions are absolutely, absolutely uh, arising. They are at boiling point, as you can probably tell from what's happening out into the world um, in terms of protests, in terms of riots, uh, in terms of frustrations, of, uh, of dissatisfactions. So this full moon, 23rd to 24th of July, um, it is happening at um, one degree, 25 minutes of Aquarius. Um, if we're talking about GMT here, GMT time, uh, this is happening on the 24th of July at 2.36 a.m. So in the sky, we are going to have an opposition between the sun and the moon, the sun being in its uh, domicile in Leo and the moon being in uh, the house of Saturn in, uh, in Aquarius. Full moons generally bring with them culminations, pinnacles, um, times of crisis, because things are coming to a peak, things are uh, reaching near boiling point. The full moon chapter is generally associated um, with reaping the rewards, reaping the results of what you have sown at the time of the new moon. And that is perfectly valid if we think about it at a, at a collective level, but also if we think about it at an individual level. So first uh, exercise for you, I'm giving you homework. Um, have a read through uh, maybe your emails, um, your notes, um, your journal, if you're journaling, to see what sort of themes emerged for you around the 11th of February at the beginning of this year, uh, three days before, three days after, and uh, also have a think about what came up, what popped up in your life at, a, at an individual level, uh, but also if you can remember something uh, big um, at a collective level around the 21st of December. Uh, I can certainly remember um, at the time of the Great Conjunction, uh, 21st of December last uh, last year in Aquarius, Jupiter Saturn uh, came together, and that's when the cryptocurrency boom kicked off, and that's when prices for 
various cryptocurrencies uh, started going through the roof, but especially for the mainstream ones, it does make sense, obviously, because uh, Jupiter is uh, associated with uh, with prosperity. It is associated with riches and um, Jupiter coming together with Saturn in the sign of Aquarius generally does indicate bringing into mainstream, bringing into um, the system, because Saturn is the system, uh, a new type, an innovative, progressive type of asset such as cryptocurrency. So if we are to uh, make a wild prediction, a wild guess, uh, there will probably be news around cryptocurrencies, maybe them being regulated, um, maybe them being um, adopted and as some part of a system, uh, possibly uh, also news connected with new restrictions and constraints around owning, buying, selling cryptocurrency, um, etc. Uh, these sort of uh, news are likely to come to uh, the forefront of our um, of our attention. Um, also, at a collective level, we can probably expect peaks in protests, um, peaks um, in news um, connected or legislation connected with individual freedoms um, and um, also um, news connected with technological developments that affect the masses and that are also quite likely to have um, significant portions of the population up in arms. I mean, we have had a very challenging month, a very challenging July. I'm filming this on the 18th of July, and uh, up until this point, uh, this month, uh, we've had violent protests in South Africa. I'm, I don't know if they will continue um, until the full moon. Probably they, they will, I've got to say, and they may reach this, this culmination around the full moon. We've had devastating floods in uh, Germany and Belgium uh, this month. Um, the French government, I think they're looking to make vaccines mandatory or something of that, uh, of that sort. Uh, we've also had the assassination of a president, the president of Haiti, in in the news. And uh, on the 19th of July, and as I said, I'm filming this on the 18th, uh, restrictions are, all restrictions are actually due to be lifted in uh, the UK, all uh, restrictions connected with this whole thing, uh, this whole um, situation globally. Uh, cases are rising. But restrictions, restrictions are being lifted. It's a very interesting and stormy scenario, if I may say. And uh, the opposition between the many and the few is likely to become more and more prominent and more and more obvious at the time of this, um, of this full moon. If I were to make a bit of a wild prediction at a collective level, I would say whatever announcements um, make it to the surface, make it to, I don't know, the media, I, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that, uh, well, uh, challenging topic, let's put it this way, but I have been reading some ridiculous headlines in the media. And uh, sometimes I take it quite personally since I have, before dedicating myself full time to astrology, I have worked in the media in the past. So I'm like, no, you can't say that. You can't write these headlines. You can't instill this type of sentiment in the population. It makes zero sense. So uh, we are probably going to hear some sort of uh, news that are uh, that is likely to infuriate the masses connected with the elites. Um, very interesting case here in the UK. Uh, this weekend, uh, the health secretary tested positive for the thing. <sighs> I'm not going to mention it because I don't know what YouTube's policy is around it and I don't want to get into any sort of, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I don't want uh, this video to suffer because of it. Uh, so the health secretary tested positive and um, the prime minister of the UK and the uh, chancellor um, initially, because they were in contact with the, the, the health uh, minister who tested positive, obviously they were meant to isolate, to self-isolate for 10 days. And they at the beginning said that they would not self-isolate, although everyone in this country, when they get a ping to self-isolate, by law, they're actually 
expected to self-isolate because they were in contact with someone who tested positive. And uh, due to public backlash, uh, initially they said they wouldn't self-isolate because they're just going to do tests every day and uh, they're running this pilot scheme and whatnot. Everyone was up in arms, I will tell you, uh, including the opposition. Um, and uh, for good reason, because they were citing uh, <laughs> the fact that uh, there's one rule for the many, for the masses and another rule or no rule for the few. They can bend the rules however they best see fit. And because of uh, public frustration and uh, yeah, essentially uh, the masses uh, being completely up in arms, the prime minister and uh, the chancellor will actually go into quarantine. So I believe that's a perfect example of the energy of this full moon. So the opposition, uh, the full moon is happening in Aquarius. Aquarius is groups of people, masses, the collective, uh, humanitarian goals and ideals. And Leo, where the sun is, and the sun is feeling really good in Leo, um, is connected with uh, the individual uh, and their specialness and their uniqueness. And uh, Leo is also privilege. Aquarius is the many, uh, the minorities, um, unity and diversity, equality for all, we're all brethren and siblings and whatnot. And Leo says, I'm special. I'm the most special. I am privileged. I am royal. I deserve special treatment. So we're going to have a lot of these themes come up at this full moon. I can give you that. Um, it's going to be interesting um, how how this uh, how this plays out. Um, this full moon in particular is probably going to draw to our attention the fact that um, we can't be at extreme sides of this matter. I mean, we obviously can. It's it's a free world. Well, it used to be, <laughs> but. There is a need to find a middle ground. There is a need to compromise. There is a need to meet each other halfway, whether you feel like you are the most special uh, person in the world and you are a part of the elite and whatnot, um, and, or whether you feel like you are part of uh, the many and the collective and no one cares about what happens to you and uh, you just have to obey, obey, obey and stand in line and... Uh, uh, mind your own business and uh, be part of the, uh, well, uh, the group that bows their heads. But if we take this kind of like polar opposites view of the situation, then we are likely to see violent clashes, violent clashes, I, I have to say. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if this full moon brought with it uh, cyber attacks, cyber crimes, uh, and uh, some sort of uh, surprising and shocking and outrageous uh, revelation um, that has a technological aspect to it. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe the data of all the people who sign up for, I don't know, the the... the the app that tracks you is stolen or uh, so something of that uh, something of that nature I absolutely wouldn't be surprised if that were to uh, if that were to happen <sighs> what a what a mouthful so at the time of the full moon we've got the sun in opposition with uh, with the moon um it's very interesting because in traditional astrology uh, the sun is uh, connected with uh, the rational mind and with enlightenment and the moon is connected with the subconscious and not just in traditional astrology but mostly in traditional astrology so we have a bit of an opposition between um the heart and the mind the soul, our needs, our, our subconscious needs, our sense of safety and security, and uh, the mind that tells us um, you deserve the best, you are um, the one and only XYZ uh, in, in the world. And um, it can feel like we are being pulled in two completely opposite directions. And ultimately, 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 I, th I do believe there is a middle ground. I absolutely do believe that with uh, with all my heart. If, if there is one thing that uh, Leo is great at, <laughs> and this full moon triggers the sun in Leo, obviously, uh, Leo is the creator of the zodiac. So create a solution. 
All of us, we've got to create a solution. We've got to come up with a solution uh, that is an extreme, that uh, does not separate people into two different camps, that does not pit us against each other. Create, come up with something new. Allow yourselves to be enlightened. So we are uh, also having in the sky, the, the, the aspect that I, I do feel like it is saving us a little bit um, is... Um, Mercury at the time of the full moon in Cancer in a harmonious aspect about to form an exact trine um, with uh, Neptune in Pisces. So um, emotionally, this is connected with some sort of healing energy. And Saturn, the ruler of the full moon, is still obviously in a tense aspect in a square with Uranus. So that is still going on. Let's dive into the updates for each individual sign, my lovelies. So if you are an Aries sun or an Aries rising, and uh, I do want to stress out, it is very important, very important if you know your rising sign to listen to your rising sign first. If you don't know it, find it out. Ask your mom what time you were born uh, at. Ask your, 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 your grandparents if they are around because uh, you are likely to relate a lot more to the update for your rising sign or your ascendant the ascendant is the exact degree of the rising sign uh, you're likely to relate a lot more to it than you are to relate to your sun sign update if you don't know your rising sign that's absolutely fine listen to your sun sign because the sun is the ego but consider yourselves uh, informed so on the 24th of july aries give or take 23rd to 24th give or take three days before three days after we've got a full moon in aquarius um at uh one uh degree 25 minutes of aquarius um in your 11th house, triggering your 11th house, 5th house axis, uh, playing back to themes that emerged in your life around the um, 11th of February 2021. So have a think about what was going on in your life at that uh, point in time, around that time. What do we have here? We've got Saturn in Aquarius in the same house, in the 11th house, squaring Uranus and Taurus in the second, and we've got Mercury and Cancer in your fourth house, trining Neptune and Pisces in your 12th. So Aries, around the um, 24th of July, uh, you are likely to catch up with friends. You are likely to uh, get together with a group of people that maybe you haven't caught up for a very long time. Uh, you are also likely to... Uh, um, is examine and uh, evaluate and reevaluate possibly uh, one of your long-term plans. Uh, this is uh, probably coming to some sort of fruition, but maybe, maybe not exactly in the format that you wanted to, possibly because your values have changed in the meantime, uh, as of uh, February, uh, possibly because there may be some um, shifts in your financial sector that ask you, okay, this, this was the plan initially, but now my financial situation is different. What do I do? Uh, it could also be a time of the um, uh, completion of a creative project, something that you did um, in um, collaboration with a team of, of people, uh, also possibly, possibly in collaboration with a uh, family uh, member and uh, you may get together with family members at this uh, at this point in time and probably uh, finally make one of your plans happen together as a unit as as, as a whole. Now, if you are a Taurus sun or a Taurus rising, uh, 23rd to 24th of July, uh, this full moon is happening in Aquarius in your 10th house of career, triggering your 10th house, 4th house axis. Saturn in Aquarius in your 10th house is squaring Uranus and Taurus in the first house. And let's see. So the moon for you rules your third house of communication and Saturn rules your ninth house and your 10th house. So the kind of like stars of this uh, of this full moon. Uh, there is a very high chance that at this point in time, my dear Taurus, uh, you may complete a chapter in your uh, career, in your professional life that is uh, linked with something that... Um, you started off that emerged uh, around the 11th of February, uh, the week with the uh, 11th of, uh, of February 2021, uh, by the way. I would also look back at the themes that came up in your career around the Great Conjunction in December 2020, so around the 21st of December, a week before the week after. Uh, you could be deciding to leave... Uh, 
a workplace at this point in time. Why? Because you're no longer aligned from a mentality perspective. You're looking to break free. Uh, there could be a, an actual clash with people in positions of authority. Um, if you're not uh, deciding to submit your resignation, which I wouldn't be surprised if you did at this time, I am going to be very frank. Uh, you may take a long-term decision regarding your career at this uh, at this point in time, my lovely uh, my lovely Torians. What I like about this is that Mercury and Cancer in your third house of communication is trining Neptune in your uh, 11th house of long-term plans. Uh, Mercury is the ruler of your second house of income, so it does look like financially you may have already set a new plan in motion, or there could be an opportunity to collaborate coming up your way from a friend that makes your decision a little bit easier uh, when it comes to your uh, your career. Uh, tension in the career environment is very very, 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 very likely Taurus. So consider yourselves warned. But there are good things that come out of this. Uh, and the good thing is that you are feeling more like yourself if you call things by their name. Now, if you are a Gemini sun or a Gemini rising, uh, 23rd to 24th of July, uh, this full moon in Aquarius is happening in your ninth house of long distance travel, triggering your ninth house and third house axis, um, the axis of travel and the axis of communication. First and foremost, look back at what was going on in your life around the 11th of February, uh, because uh, this full moon is a cycle, uh, marks a cycle of, uh, of uh, completion of something that kicked off in February uh, with, week uh, of the uh, 11th of February, you're probably going to be hearing news uh, or um, results uh, connected with any sort of studies, uh, any sort of learning path that you may uh, have embarked upon, uh, results of exams maybe. Uh, you could be hearing uh, news about admissions, about whether you've been accepted to a university or a class or a course or, uh, or not. What I like about this full moon is that uh, this could also be a time when you could finally be putting into practice uh, one of your plans of traveling. Uh, and you could also be hearing news connected with a legal matter in your life. Now, the one thing, though, that I'm not very excited about is that Saturn in your ninth house is squaring Uranus and Taurus in the 12th. So, for instance, if you are receiving news connected with uh, education, uh, there could be a hidden element that you did not take into account that you now need to prepare for. And you've got roughly a month until the next full moon to do so uh, in the same part of your chart. Um, there could also be an unexpected element that requires you to spend additional time um, in the legal sphere, maybe sending paperwork, sending documents. So that could prove uh, a little bit of a hassle. Now, if you are a Cancer Sun or a Cancer Rising, uh, the full moon in Aquarius Cancerians on the 23rd to 24th of July uh, is happening in our eighth house, our, um, our money axis, actually, second house, eighth house, playing back to themes that came up around the 11th of February. This could be a time of you reaping the rewards and the results of maybe an investment that you made around um, around the 11th of February. Uh, you could be receiving your money back uh, if you lent money to someone around that time. Uh, this could also be a time when you are called to pay taxes or to take care of some sort of um, debt that could be connected with one of your uh, creative projects or collaborative um, projects. What I like about this full moon is the fact that uh, you could be receiving maybe news about an investor, maybe news about your partner's finances uh, that are uh, actually impacting, like significantly impacting your long-term plans for uh, for the future. Um, Mercury and Cancer in your first house is trining Neptune and Pisces in the ninth house. Uh, you are seeing the bigger picture out of this, uh, even if the news uh, is... Uh, likely to come up with some delays because we obviously have uh, Saturn in the same sign as the full moon. Uh, you are looking at the positive side of things and you're looking at the big picture and you're realizing, okay, if this is taking a, a little bit longer, it's not a bad thing per se. It's giving you more time to be better prepared. 
Now, if you are a Leo sun or a Leo rising, um, on the 23rd to 24th of July, uh, the full moon, three days before, three days after, uh, is likely to reflect back to themes that were um, shaping your life, shaping your experience around the 11th of February this year. Uh, the full moon is happening in Aquarius, uh, in your seventh house of marriage, partnerships, and long-term committed relationships. Uh, this is likely to bring to your attention um, possibly some sort of um, um, information connected with the future of a uh, relationship. Um, it could bring uh, maybe an honest but still tense uh, face-off between your values and your partner's values, where you want your life to be headed and where your partner sees your life as a couple together uh, heading out. It can mark a moment of additional commitment to an existing partner. It could be a life partner. It could be a business partner. Uh, it could be a time of deciding to go into business with someone uh, or deciding to walk away to break free from a contract, my, uh, my dear Leos. And uh, if you are finding yourself breaking free from a contract, then I, I wouldn't be so quick to think that this is it for good because you've got another full moon in the same part of your chart uh, on the 22nd of August. So uh, maybe take some time to reevaluate the parameters of your uh, of your uh, relationship, of your partnership. What I like about this, uh, this full moon is that you almost see your partner very, very clearly. It's a moment of truth and they see you clearly as uh, as well. And I also like the fact that Mercury and Cancer is trining Neptune and Pisces in your eighth house of intimacy. And Mercury for you uh, rules your 11th house and your second house. So uh, I would say uh, having this sort of like face off between you and your partner uh, is likely to result in a deeper bond um, when we think longer uh, term. Uh, why? Because it's pushing you to make adjustments to your life direction separately uh, in order to build a future together. Now, for those of you who are single, this could be a time when... Uh, you either meet someone, but you're feeling quite self-conscious. I want to put it out there, Leos. Now, if you are Virgo Sun or Virgo Rising, uh, the full moon on the 24th of July is happening in Aquarius in your sixth house of health. It is triggering your sixth house of health and also your 12th house of, uh, of rest, but also of self-sacrifice, of, of uh, isolation. Uh, this is likely to mark for you, uh, my dear Virgos, uh, possibly the end of a um, health-related or work-related chapter that uh, you kicked off in February, around the 11th of February. Uh, it could be a moment in time when a coworker leaves or when you um, experience some sort of uh, maybe possible restructurings and uh, resets of your priorities as a team in your in your day-to-day -day, uh, life it could also be a time when you decide to say goodbye to one of your daily habits it is a great time actually to pay attention to your fitness to pay attention to how much you rest how much uh you work uh, to have a think about uh, whether there is a better way of achieving balance so that you can also maintain your physical balance because it could be a time when there could be a little bit of inflammation in the physical body as uh, as well so i do want you to be prepared for that if you can take it easy if you can slow down if you can uh maybe let's say not take personally uh any sort of um how should we uh how should we say developments at work and actually prioritize your well-being that would probably be one of the best best uh attitudes now if you are a libra sun or a libra rising on the 23rd 24th of july this full moon in aquarius is happening in your fifth house of children and uh entertainment and romantic love Look back at what was going on in your life on the 11th of February, three days before, three days after as well, because uh, this full moon completes the cycle that started uh, six months ago. Um, it could be a moment in time when you possibly, possibly um, figure out how a romantic interest uh, features into your long-term plans. It could be a time when you might present someone who you're romantically uh, involved with to your circle of friends. Um, there could be some 
differences in values, I, I will put it out there. Um, you may also um, have a bit of a revelation as to how living in the moment, living in the day to day has been keeping you away from fulfilling your longer term objectives and goals. Uh, it is a bit of an aha moment connected with your long term goals and plans. Um, I would also recommend at this time to have a think about whether you've been living too much in the future, too much thinking ahead, too much planning ahead and not giving yourself permission to enjoy the moment any longer because you might realize and I don't want it to be uh, I don't want it to be frustrating for you, uh, but you might realize uh, what we have is now obviously it, it's, it's a good thing to make plans, to have a vision, to know where you're headed, but at the same time, not at the expense of being anchored in the present um, reality. Uh, there could also be some sort of news, uh, maybe financially, that aren't necessarily <laughs> making you super happy. Um, if you've got children, so there could be maybe some taxes to pay connected with children, an unexpected expense connected with, uh, connected with children. So uh, what I do like about this uh, full moon, my dear Libras, is that both the sun and uh, the moon are forming a harmonious whole sign aspect with the sign of Libra in general. So if you, uh, along with uh, along with Gemini's, along with Aries, um, also along with uh, with Sagittarius, uh, I would say you are the ones who um, are likely to, to an extent, um, actually enjoy this full moon, unlike. <laughs> Um, Scorpios so much, Taurians, uh, Leos and Aquarians, because there can feel like there's a lot of pressure on them around this time. Not that it can't bring good news, but there is literal tension in the air for them. Now, if you are a Scorpio sun or a Scorpio rising, this full moon in Aquarius is happening in your fourth house of home, family, and living situation. Uh, look back at what was going on in your family life, in your residence sector around the 11th of February, because uh, there could be a reflection of themes, a completion of what you started out at the time. Um, there is a possibility that you're moving into a new home at this point in time. There can also be maybe, maybe, maybe don't uh, don't shoot the messenger. Um, a little bit of a a little bit of a clash uh, when it comes to belief systems. Why? Because the moon rules your ninth house of belief systems. Uh, a bit of a clash um, when it comes to belief systems between you and a family member. Uh, there could also be some sort of delay, maybe uh, frustration connected with traveling with a family member. Um, a family member might need your help in terms of a legal, a judicial matter. Uh, it is stressing you a little bit out. I will put it to, out there, Scorpio. Uh, but at the same time, um, I would also say that what you're working on family and home-wise at this time, maybe residence wise there is some sort of legal matter that you need to take care of whatever you're working on uh, is uh, an effort that uh, you have uh, had to put for quite some time don't give up now if there is an extra obstacle that you need to cross cross it and don't absolutely do not give up uh, Scorpios I have to say because the next full moon in Aquarius in August is looking so much prettier so much prettier now if you're a Sagittarius Sun or a Sagittarius rising on the 24th of July the full moon in Aquarius Aquarius, uh, 23rd, 24th, um, three days before, three days after as well. The full moon in Aquarius is triggering your learning and uh, travel axis. Uh, this could be a time when you may decide to purchase a new car, uh, when you could have some sort of challenges with the, your existing car. Your The third house is connected with transportation. So this is something that uh, pushes you to reassess uh, your relationship with your current vehicle, so to speak. It could be a time when you sell your your uh, your own car. Um, it could also be a time when you um, maybe have to sit an exam uh, connected with some sort of uh, practical uh, skill. You may also hear news uh, connected with the health of a sibling, if you've got siblings, or the work uh, situation of a sibling. Um, and uh, it might be a little bit stressful, but I, I will tell you, it's not something that is going to last for very, very uh, long. Uh, short distance trips are also very possible around this time. If you're a Capricorn sun or a Capricorn rising, this full moon, three days before, three days after the 23rd, 24th as well, is happening in your second house of England. 
income. You are getting paid, uh, Capricorns. Uh, this is a moment in time when you are reaping the rewards of your hard, hard, hard work. And financially, you are receiving some sort of a um, significant payment. Uh, look back at what you started financially in uh, February, especially around the the 11th because this could be a moment of completion of reaping the, the the results of the seeds that you have sown um we've got mercury and cancer in your third trining neptune in your seventh my apologies trining neptune and pisces in your third so uh, a little bit of creativity is actually likely to go a very 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 long way my dear uh capricorns uh in terms of uh how to deal with maybe some sort of unexpected expense or if there is some sort of delay that you hear of at this point in time about you getting paid, I would not hesitate to reach out to uh, some sort of um, a legal consultant because they are likely to sort things out for you very, very easily. <sighs> Don't stress out if uh, there are delays in getting paid, uh, Capricorns. Now, if you are an Aquarius sun or an Aquarius rising, um, on the 23rd, 24th, uh, this full moon in Aquarius is happening in your first house of identity and of the physical body. Um, have you started working on yourself in some shape or form, uh, developing yourself uh, in any meaningful way since February, since the 11th? Because if so, now you may be feeling ready to emerge from your cocoon and say, okay, I've had this revelation. This is who I want to be. This is how I want to present myself to, uh, to the world. Um, it could be a little bit of a, um, let's say, a moment in time when you realize how you want to differentiate yourself from your family, from your roots, and from your past, because Saturn in your first house is um, squaring Uranus in the fourth house, uh, it could also be a time when you decide to establish stronger boundaries in all relationships in your life, but especially in committed relationships, so in, in, in uh, life partnerships, but also in your family, because you're saying, no, this is it, these are my principles, I'm standing by them, these are my boundaries, and I'm going to enforce them. Now, if you are a Pisces sun or Pisces rising on the 24th of July, uh, the full moon, 23rd to 24th, the full moon in Aquarius is happening in your 12th house of uh, introspection, of rest, um, of um, connection with the divine. Look back at whatever part in your life required you to surrender and to go with the flow and to let go in February in particular. Uh, was there a particular um, instance that reminded you that you are not fully in control, that uh, sometimes a higher power is taking control and the best thing that you can do in order to minimize the pain uh, or to minimize the frustration, not the pain, uh, is to go where the wave is taking you. Um, you could be um, taking some sort of holiday, some sort of vacation, some sort of rest at this point in time, which I highly recommend. Uh, you may also experience maybe possibly some sort of uh, enlightenment um, and revelation connected uh, with the way you communicate and also connected with uh, the way you um, use one of your tangible practical skills on a day-to-day -day basis because Saturn in your 12th house, the ruler of, of this uh, full moon, is in a tense aspect to Uranus in the third house. So you might have an aha moment, a eureka moment about how you can improve uh, the quality of your uh, communications on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when it comes to uh, work environments. Um, you could be feeling drained from work at this time and at the same time you could be having this as I said, uh, enlightening moment where you're like, okay, now I realize how I need to address this stakeholder, this client, this situation moving forward. And uh, I realize how much it has frustrated me in the past. Um, and now I've got the key uh, for it. And that is your full moon update. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh, let me know how the full moon plays out for you. I absolutely, absolutely enjoy uh, reading your comments. Um, I know I don't respond to all of them. And especially in the past month, I have been away for almost a month and a half. You've seen me uh, away in my in my natal Romania. I'm back now, uh, but it has been uh, a little bit more um, on and uh, off. 
Once again, if you want to work with me, you can find me on my website, writteninthestars-astrology.com, and uh, you can purchase consultations and readings with me from uh, from my site. Um, now the waiting time, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I will need to check my calendar, um, I believe is uh, between six to eight, nine weeks. So uh, just for you to kind of like be prepared to, to know what to expect in terms of waiting time. Uh, I know some astrologers work differently. They just uh, block Lock their their uh, their readings, their consultations, their purchases on their site, and they book only I don't know like a month in advance. I prefer to book <laughs> uh, a couple of months in advance because if you want to purchase a reading and if you see that it's uh, unavailable or something like that, uh, I don't want you to feel disappointed and say, "Oh, I'm never gonna get to, uh, access to it. I'm never gonna be able to do so." Or who knows when uh, she's gonna be taking uh, consultations once more. So uh, that's why I do prefer to keep my uh, readings open and to flag that the waiting time is a little bit longer. You can also follow me for more life updates on Instagram at R-U-X unbelievable uh, in one word. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in and um, take care of yourselves. Bye.